of changes. And the, the picture here shows uh, its current status. So we, uh, so uh, the input of the system is uh, is a motion like subsidized preschool, and then the output we are supposed to um, construct the output in terms. Uh, so it's um, the three uh, speeches: opening speech, rebuttal speech, and the summary uh, summary speech. So to do so, uh, we have like four components. So uh, the first component is is called argument mining. So goes the goal of this component is to um, uh, retrieve the related uh, claims and evidence uh, given the, uh, the, the the topic from a very big corpus, and then we also have like uh, argument knowledge based uh, uh, component. The goal is to try to map the specific topic or motion to uh, to the, the to the uh, nodes in uh, in the knowledge uh, in the argumentative knowledge base. And then try to come up with the uh, possible principal arguments uh, which can be uh, used in the debate. And then we also have the rebuttal uh, component. So um, the goal of this component is try to listen to um, human debaters' speech and try to capture the main points raised by the human debater and come up with uh, possible rebuttal arguments. And then finally, the middle component, we call it like debate construction. So this component takes uh, the input, uh, the, the output from the uh, other three components as the input, and then it's removed the redundant, uh, re redundant argument and cluster, uh, cluster these uh, arguments and then try to extract the meaningful thing among them. And, and then we use discourse planning to construct the meaningful statement. Finally, we run text to speech. So this will give us uh, uh, the output I described before. So unfortunately, till this date, there's no um, one article which describes the whole system. Instead, we have along the journey. So we have the different uh, uh, publications describe the uh, different aspects uh, of the system. So I just missed a few, uh, uh, like the publications which describe the different uh, uh, box uh, in the system. So um, actually, we had a repository which lists all the publications and along with uh, all the release data sets. So if you are interested, um, please uh, check them out. So, all right. Now I will focus on the argument uh, retrieval component in Project Debater. So, uh, first, I like to uh, uh, point out that uh, actually there's a lot of like related work going on in this area, like in terms of argument mining or argumentative like uh, unit identification. So within this, I just list uh, a few of them on the screen. Um, so within this big context, um, so the argument mining was argument retrieval, um, uh, like component in project debater went through stages. So the first stage I'd like to call, call uh, so I'd like to call it like the Wikipedia stage. That was back in 2014 and 2015. So back then, uh, we were working on the English Wikipedia data set. The goal is to uh, identify the claims and the evidence for a given motion from uh, English Wikipedia data set. So back then, we had an in-house expert annotator team to do the annotation like uh, for a given controversial topic. And first, our annotator will select uh, Wikipedia articles which are directly address this topic. And then uh, they will like read the whole uh, article and try to identify um, the span of the claim, the span of the evidence which can use um, um, uh, in this uh, in, in debate. And then uh, this, this process followed up by another steps which have, uh, we have another like group of the annotators which will uh, who will either confirm or reject these claims evidence. To, this is just for the purpose to improve the annotation quality. So as a result, our Wikipedia data set um, um, contains uh, 58 uh, motions or topics. Um, so we have around like uh, related uh, around 600 Wikipedia articles, 2.k claims and 4.k evidences. So Back then, so uh, our system to uh, retrieve or detect um, 
claims or evidence from Wikipedia article is uh, uh, works like this. So given a topic, and then we first run the topic analysis, uh, such as we know that okay, the the uh, main concept is preschool, and then the action is uh, subsidized. So after this, we we have like the uh, um, uh, document level. Uh, like information retrieval component. The goal is to retrieve the documents that directly address the topic and also likely to contain argumentative text. So based on these retrieved documents, so um, in order to detect claims and evidence uh, within these documents, so we had a logic regression model with lots of carefully designed uh, features. So I would say back then, uh, the major, the main point of our work is to uh, is, is is like the, a lot of huge uh, feature engineering. So um, back then, the most powerful feature is called GASP feature. So it's an algorithm or a model which learns the rich linguist patterns. Um, for argumentative text. So we actually had a paper back at EMLP 2017 to describe this, uh, uh, this model. So if you are interested in it, please uh, go to check it out. And then back then, I, uh, so our experiment setup is we have like the trend static trend depth test uh, split. So I would comment that actually this is um, the standard practice, common practice within the NLP community, right? We gathered the annotated data set we split it into a uh, trend depth test data set, and then we design our model on the training data set. We tune the parameter on the depth set, and then we report the performance on the uh, test uh, data set. This is all fine, no problem if we, in, in terms of the doing research. But the end of the day, we found that um, this kind of the practice is enough. It is not enough to support uh, the industry application. Um, this is because in the end, we found that we only have the moderate uh, success over a, a, a range of the testing motions. Uh, one of the big problems back then, so is like, uh, we only remember before I, uh, I told you, during the exhaustive annotation of the Wikipedia uh, article, and then we only annotated the positive training instances. But actually, uh, we found that um, negative training instances play a big role uh, for this task, it's especially the hard uh, negative training instances. So um, we will had a difficult time back then to, to, to kind of identify these um, hard negative training instances. And, and, and then another big issue is like with this moderate um, performance, and then um, there's no uh, point that the system will go nature to construct any meaningful uh, speech. So because of this, and then later we switch to the second stage, I call it like the very large uh, corpus um, stage. So instead of using Wikipedia, so we use uh, like, uh, we had a corpus which contains around 400 mini articles from uh, Nexus Nexus. So instead of doing document level retrieval, we do the sentence level uh, indexing and the retrieval. So, um, so we had a triple AI paper um, uh, uh, this year to describe uh, this system actually. So um, in the following, I will, in the following, uh, I will walk you through briefly about the system. So there are like the um, three main um, differences between uh, this new system compared to the previous work. First, uh, first is as I said, I said you before. Um, be, uh, in, in ter so instead of doing document level um, information retrieval, we switch to the uh, sentence level information retrieval. The second part is the scale. Remember, in the Wikipedia stage, we only have around like uh, around sixty motions, but uh, right now we scale uh, the data up, so we have like two hundred forty trend and depth set, uh, topics and 100 uh, um, uh, testing uh, topics. So, um, so actually during the uh, uh, model develop, uh, develop uh, during, the, during the model development time, as a researcher, we actually don't have access to the testing uh, topics. So what we did is like, we reserve a small uh, set of the depth set as our uh, uh, testing set. So when we run the model, when we get the performance, we will do the uh, error analysis on that specific test set. 
And then, of course, once in a while, we will like, uh, like uh, every two months or every quarter, we will run the whole system on the real testing uh, uh, motions to get the real performance. But we never have the chance to check what are those uh, testing topics are. So this is kind of the practice to avoid us to overfit, uh, overfit our model. And then uh, now think about it, it's like our, it's kind of like the internal uh, leaderboard. So uh, yeah, that was fun to think about it. So, and then the, the, the second point, uh, so the, uh, and, and the third, sorry, the third point is like, we don't have um, annotated data, right? It's, it's, it's like, it's not possible to do the exhaustive annotation to annotate 400 uh, meaning uh, articles. And then therefore we use the retrospective labeling paradigm uh, to do the annotation. So I will talk about it uh, in a minute. And um, so towards the end, we use this kind of the paradigm to connect annotations for around uh, 200, uh, 200 case sentences. So this is a, a, a system, a new system architecture. So given the a massive corpus I, I told you before, which contains around 10 million sentences. So uh, for, uh, for a specific controversial topic, such as um, subsidized preschool, first we have the query component. So this query component support uh, flexible patterns to retrieve um, uh, sentences which are likely argumentative. For instance, I, I can like ask uh, the query to give me a sentence which contains a topic term like preschool and evidence connectors such as play a big role, increase, decrease. Um, and also the words from the predefined uh, sentiment lexicon or like any NER terms such as um, organization, uh, uh, expert human being or any numbers. So, um, so in the retrieval component, so for each topic, we retrieve up to uh, 12 uh, case sentences per evidence type. And then we follow in with a, a ranking model to rank these sentences. So after the ranking, we, the hope is like the top ranked sentences are likely the valid claims or the evidence uh, we can use to debate in this topic. But the point is like, we don't know, right? We don't have annotation for its, its highly ranked sentences. So here is the point that uh, retrospective labeling paradigm uh, comes into the play. So we finish one experiment and then we, uh, we, we, we send the top 40 uh, sentences for each motion to our uh, annotator and then uh, when the annotation is done, um, we get it back and then we run the testing, we know the performance. This is not new, but the, the, the point is like um, we can't afford to wait two days or up to one week to get the annotation back, right? And then to, to evaluate the system. So we can't allow that, right? So therefore we have a very powerful infra infrastructure which can support the quick dynamic experiments and also in the same time monitor the annotation quality. So um, each time when we do experiment, we, we, have the we have the new query and then we have like the uh, new rank model. We have the new like uh, uh, results and then we send the uh, new results um, to the annotation team and then uh, like within two hours. Um, and then uh, sometimes uh, if the experiment is big and we have a new, a, a, a lot of results and then new results and then we will wait like up here like three or four hours and then, but this is real, normally it's two, two hours. And then we will get the results or we will get annotation back and then we will evaluate our system and then we will go back um, to do the error analysis, start a new one of like, uh, 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 like the experiment. So this kind of the iteratively uh, connect the labeled data. So you may ask like, oh, um, isn't reasonable uh, a pro? Is it reasonable to ask like the crowd annotator to annotate such a uh, complex uh, tasks? So we had the same uh, thought in the very beginning. So we had a lot of internal discussions and we, we, we went through a lot of like pilot studies. So in the end, we were able to um, came up with the simple guideline and simple process. And uh, plus the carefully uh, monitoring, we were get able to get like a reasonable uh, annotation uh, result back. So um, this is uh, one example of us, uh, uh, of our like um, 
retrospective labeling. So given a motion, blood donation should be mandatory. So, um, so our ranking model like proposed like the two sentences, uh, one first sentence and the second sentence. And then the crowd flower annotators will confirm, they confirm the first sentence. They think it is valid evidence uh, for this motion. And then they reject the second sentence. So, but if you look at the uh, second sentence, uh, actually, on the surface form, it has like perfect uh, indicators for the evidence, for all the argumentative, right? It has statistics show that it, 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 it contains the main like uh, topic term blood uh, uh, donor. It also have like these numbers, 80%. But when you read um, the context, actually it's just pair of fact and then it's, it, 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 it's, it's not uh, the evidence uh, or a piece of argument text you want to use when you uh, when you uh, participate sorry um, debate on this motion, so uh, this is kind of the hard I would call it like the hard uh, hard uh, negative instances um, I, I I I described before. We we don't have such hard um, difficult difficult uh, negative instances annotated in the Wikipedia uh, stage, and therefore it's very hard for us to further push uh, the performance of our system. All right, so um, this is the uh, performance of our uh, new system. So, uh, so here is like the best model, the best model um, which fine tuned on BERT. So, um, so the, if we look at the precision across um, the, uh, the different 100 motions, 100 topics as, uh, as top 40, so we were able to get like a 95% accuracy. So um, with, this, uh, with this kind of the high precision and the wide coverage, so we were uh, confident that um, the system have the chance, at least have the chance to construct uh, the meaningful, um, meaningful argument uh, uh, text in, during the speech. All right. So, uh, so for the um, uh, for the remain uh, for the uh, uh, right now. So for the remaining uh, time, so I would like to share with you uh, some of the thoughts uh, along the journey. So, there are a lot of challenges when we design a live debate system, such as we have to digest the uh, uh, this massive corpus. We have to um, deliver. Uh, this retrieve uh, arguments or construct arguments with clarity and purpose. And in the same time, we have to pay attention to what human debaters said, right? We have to capture the key claims. Um, so um, among all of this, I would say that argument retrieval is the uh, uh, first step to build such a, a system. The problem is like um, to have like uh, to 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 have this system working, and the many things need to succeed uh, simultaneously. But in the same time, many things can go wrong for different reasons. So, for instance, uh, if we are getting the stance wrong, which means uh, we are supporting our opponent, and then um, in the argument, so in the argument retrieval component, the most uh, um, error we've seen, the most common um, uh, uh, error we've seen is like the topic drifting. And finally, uh, the system is only as good as its corpus, right? Like suppose for a specific, uh, specific topic, if there's no high quality content, uh, content in our uh, large scale corpus, so there's no chance for us to, to, to like construct like the high quality uh, speech during the debate. So among all of these uh, 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 the problems, so we, we start addressing all of these problems like uh, uh, one at a time. So uh, from 2015 here uh, to uh, 2020, and then when we look back and then this plot uh, show, clearly shows the progress uh, we made over the time. So this shows the performance of the claim detection uh, in terms of the micro average precision at top 50 over all uh, motions. So uh, remember like in 2015, we were at the Wikipedia stage and then um, so we were only able to got around 20% uh, accuracy, although it has like very good, like actually it has a quite nice performance on a small set of the motions, but that's not enough, right, for uh, industry application. So therefore, like, um, 
In 2016, we, we, we switched to the very large cookers. We started uh, retrospective labeling. And then this gave us a huge um, jump in terms of performance from 20% uh, to 60%. So um, in 2017, we, start, we started uh, trying uh, experiments with sentence level information retrieval, and then we have the components to support these flexible uh, queries. This gives us another around uh, like 10% uh, uh, improvement. So, uh, oops. so um, in the end of the 2017, we started uh, with experiment with uh, deep learning. Back then, we were using attention-based by LSPM with weak supervision um, um, in our ranking model. So this gives us uh, some improvement. So finally, um, so this is uh, the performance of our like uh, 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 model. So um, you may th this is performance with the bird fan tuning. So you may wondering that oh wait a minute. BERT is such a powerful model, maybe it lends some argumentative like the properties, right, in its contextual embedding. So what about we throw this model back in the Wikipedia data, see what it will give us. So we actually did uh, such experiments. Actually, in our triple AI paper, we did a lot of like um, ablation um, study and try to tease um, the, the teeth uh, try to um, evaluate the performance of each component carefully as much as we can. So in the end, we found that in order to achieve such a performance, we actually need uh, all of these factors um, I list here before. So, uh, okay, so um, now uh, looking beyond project debate, so, um, so along, so for the past five years, argument mining uh, becomes the, uh, I, I think right now it becomes the standard keyword, right? In the list of topics uh, in the major NLP conferences such as uh, ACL, EMLP, NARCO, and Collin. So I've seen that computational argumentation um, is emerging as an um, interesting research area. Of course, it has a very nice overlap with other uh, research areas such as social NLP, with social bias, uh, framing, fact verification, and also with dialogue system, natural language generation, text summarization, and also discourse and pragmatics. So in general, that uh, uh, the project debate touches uh, some of the points uh, I list here, but uh, really it's, uh, if we look like the uh, big vision in the long run, so we are still in the, I would say we are still in the uh, starting point. So in the future, so I'm looking, uh, so I, I personally think uh, this is a very interesting and uh, exciting um, research area. So in the future, I'm looking forward to say more like um, a cool work um, in, um, towards this direction. So I guess, uh, yeah, I'll stop here. Thanks for your time. And then if you have uh, any questions, I'd like to take them. Uh, also, like I will be around during the workshop. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to me or just send me emails.